Greetings to all subscribers and guests of my channel. In this issue we will talk about the most influential man in the criminal world of Russia. This is Sergei Timofeev, better known as Sylvester. In just a few years, former tractor driver from a remote village ruthlessly dealt with all the competitors and became one of the most powerful criminal leaders of Moscow. Sergei Timofeev was born in 1955 in the tiny village of Klin, lost in the vastness of the Novgorod region. As a high school student, Timofeev began moonlighting as a tractor driver on a collective farm, earning him a nickname for himself at the start of his criminal career. The army was Timofeev's chance to get out of the village. The physically strong Timofeev joined a sports platoon. After military service it was much easier to stay in Moscow, and he did not miss his chance, getting a job as a sports instructor. Timofeev, along with his charges from the gym hand-to-hand -hand combat sections, gradually became involved with serious guys who protected cheaters and engaged sports guys for physical protection. Strong and with obvious leadership qualities, Timofeev gradually pushed everyone aside and became the leader of the group, and the street punk kids were replaced by pumped-up fighters. His nickname Tractorist was first changed to Sergei Novgorodsky, and then to the respectful nickname Sylvester. In honor of the popular Hollywood action movie actor. In the late 80s, private business was allowed in the USSR. Timofeev's gang at first took over all the illegal business in the area, all the prostitutes, cheats, thieves, and similar crowd paid a percentage to Sylvester. Then came the turn of restaurants, car service stations, market vendors, and stores. By the end of 1988 from a gang Timofeev sportsman finally formed Orkovsky a criminal group, which was to become one of the most powerful gangs in Moscow. Timofeev's criminal career was nearly interrupted at its very height. In 1989 he was arrested on charges of extorting money from a cooperator. Sylvester was facing a heavy sentence, but he managed to get out of trouble relatively easily. After serving two years in an investigative isolator, he was released. By that time, much had changed. The USSR had fallen apart, the last restrictions had been lifted, all borders were opened, and the era of wild capitalism had dawned. In the early 90s, Russia was experiencing a banking boom. Sylvester decided that there was no point in wasting time and effort on small cooperators, and he had to play big. So banks became the leader's new target. By the end of 1993, Timofeev took control of the Moscow Merchant Bank, placing his new wife at the head of the organization. It was used to move money almost overtly abroad. The bank received loans from larger banks and, through a chain of shell companies, transferred them to the accounts of foreign firms set up by Sylvester's wards. According to rough estimates, this scheme took out several tens of billions of undenominated rubles. Sylvester was a very strict leader of his criminal group. If any member of his gang was guilty or misbehaved so that the entire criminal group was in danger, that member of the gang was punished severely in front of his team, up to and including murder. Timofeev's characteristic feature was that he was not attracted to the criminal romance. Sylvester did not rely on criminals, but on athletes and former members of the security forces. Thus, his closest associates were Grigory Gazyatinsky, a former senior lieutenant of the KGB, and Sergei Ananivsky, the last Soviet powerlifting champion. Timofeev's most famous conflict was with Boris Berezovsky. The all-powerful oligarch almost fell victim to Sylvester's gang. In 1994, Sylvester tried to squeeze the money belonging to Berezovsky through the Moscow Merchant Bank, which was under his control. The oligarch got the Regional Department of Organized Crime involved in the case. In response, a few days later he was assassinated in an assassination attempt that left his driver dead and himself wounded. The assassination attempt was never solved, but unofficially Sylvester was believed to have organized it. Berezovsky managed to prevail and eventually recover the money. Timofeev had a persistent prejudice against Caucasians all his life. According to the most widely accepted version, it began after Sylvester was severely beaten by Caucasians at the dawn of his criminal career. It happened when he was still covering cheaters in Orokovo Borisovo with his muscles. The Caucasians, deceived by them, went off to get help, and coming back severely beat up everyone. Since then Sylvester was extremely negatively disposed toward any natives of the Caucasus and provoked conflicts with them. So in 1993 he started a real war with the Caucasians over the control of the Arlequino club. For Timofeev, who by that time already had solid assets, this club was a drop in the ocean, 
but he went on principle. In the spring of 1994, Otari Kvantrashvili, one of Moscow's most influential authorities, was killed by the legendary assassin Lisha the soldier. Kvantrashvili strongly distanced himself from the criminal world, created a political party and maintained close ties with the famous athletes and artists, but his name was very serious weight in certain circles. Hot on the heels of the murder was not solved, only in 2008 was convicted for its staff killer Orkovsky a criminal group Alexei Shurstabatov, known as Leosha Soldat. Timofeev was the direct orderer of the murder. By the time of his death, Sylvester was, if not the sole kingpin of the criminal world of Moscow, certainly among the three most influential leaders. Under his control were several banks and many other assets, from nightclubs and restaurants to factories outside of Moscow. On September 13, 1994, Timofeev's car was bombed in the center of the capital. The influential authority was not immediately identified, documents burned, and little was left of the body. The only way to establish his identity was to contact an American dentist who treated Sylvester during his recent trip to the United States. The list of those who wanted to get even with Timofeev was so great that the investigation did not even have a clue. All the Caucasian criminal gangs and many Moscow gangs wanted to get rid of him. Sylvester crossed a lot of people's paths. In 2011, his former bodyguard told investigators that Sylvester's murder was organized by Butthorn. Allegedly, Sylvester intended to finally legalize himself and move as far away from criminal activity as possible. At the same time he began to speak disparagingly about Butthorn, considering him incapable of existing in the legal field. Butthorn, fearing that he would eliminate him, decided to get rid of the boss and take his place. However, but Oren himself, currently serving a life sentence, denied any involvement in his boss's death. Almost immediately after Sylvester's death, a popular version emerged that he faked his death and took refuge from his many ill-wishers somewhere abroad. Especially since in the last year before his death he had been actively moving money abroad and had acquired Israeli citizenship and foreign real estate. No genetic examination was carried out and he was identified by a drawing of his teeth, which was sent to an American dentist. A few months after Sylvester's death, rumors that he was alive leaked to the media. He was met then in Vienna, then in Odessa, then in Cyprus. However, these rumors never developed further. In the 26 years since the car bombing, there has been no convincing evidence to support the claim that one of the top criminal bosses of the early 90s faked his death and stayed alive.